Hey guys, and welcome back to Dead Space. When we last left off, we were cutting tendrils. And cut tendrils is exactly what we intend on doing. Right, okay. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Mystically floating spike of death. Alright. Ooh. Alright, one second, spike of death. your lives away to the church? Does this carnage look like transcendence? I don't know what lies beyond death. Not anymore. But I do know our lives are more than just fuel for convergence. If we work together, we can fight this evil. It's not too late. Please. Well, it's a valiant effort, Klein, but I don't think many were listening to you. Oh, look, banana! Banana that's not completely rotten. How nice. Anyway, stick of death. Need my spike. Spiky stick of death. Oh. I guess these are all the. Either the commanders or. Previous commanders or. I don't know. Maybe uh, the commanding officers. Alright, let's leave our stick of death there. Ooh, text log. Uh, CEC shareholder pamphlet. Please do not distribute. What is planet cracking? Planet cracking is quite literally the dismantling of planets and moons on a macro scale by dedicated vessels known as planet crackers. Entire worlds are fractured with gravity tethers to reveal the rich seams of valuable minerals contained inside. These fractured pieces of debris are mined, processed, and then shipped to their destination. Oh god, it's so boring it's put me to sleep. Um, you may have read environmentalists' reports claiming the destruction of a planet can destroy an entire solar system due to the disruption in gravitational forces that can hold each celestial object in orbit. Some of the wider reports claim this causes the whole system to spin out of control, all planets to smash into each other. We would direct concerned investors to the article's safe and sustainability. CEC's pledge to the health of our galaxy and for a detailed breakdown on the truths of planet cracking. The short answer is planet cracking is perfectly safe and provides an essential service to Earth and her and the colonies. Out of over three dozen planet cracks, only one operation has met with less than optimal results. Critics often cite the uh, one tat disaster 11 years ago where a planet cracker lost three supply ships and a colony were lost due to a gravitational tether failure. They rarely mention since that time CEC has strengthened relationships with our manufacturers, committed to regular crew training seminars and implemented safety protocols to ensure a disaster of that magnitude can never happen again. Before each planet crack the candidate worlds are carefully chosen for their mineral content, net worth, and the safety in which they can be dismantled. Planet crackers are also invaluable for harvesting asteroids and rogue planetoids, which present a deadly risk to expensive infrastructure and installations. Planet cracking, a detailed breakdown. Planet cracking is a lengthy process, typically spanning from three to five years. Generally, the first year is spent uh, prospecting and settling up planet-side colonies to minimize losses. These colonies are intentionally a light, uh, a light outline in terms of infrastructure. The next 18 months involve tectonic excavation, gravity tether maintenance, and related planet-side activities. The planet cracker arrives between the 2.5 and 3 year mark, depending on the progress of the activation. Once the ship is in orbit, Preparation for tectonic chunk extraction begins and takes approximately one week. The removal of any ex uh, excavated chunk from the planet into a stabilized geosynchronous orbit usually takes one day, 24 standard hours. During this process, billions of tons of debris break off from the underside of the chunk, creating an instant asteroid ring around the planet. While the floating debris is extremely dangerous, planet crackers' ships have an excellent asteroid 
Defense System, ADS, to keep the ship and, su and crew safe from harm. For more information on our proprietary ADS technology, see accompanying, accompanying literature. This process is repeated until the entire planetary body has been broken up and processed. Smaller bodies such as asteroids are drawn into the mining bays and processed directly, using direct processing beams to reduce waste. As you can see, the profit margins of planet cracking vastly outweigh solely planet side operations which may not be profitable for decades or more and represent massive outliers in terms of personnel infrastructure equipment and insurance costs about us cec concordance extraction corporation is the largest solar system uh, solar mining and extraction company in the Earth colonies, and the fifth largest interstellar company in terms of market capital. Since our founding, we have become a powerhouse of industrial might and a major cross-system employer, with a generous budget allocated to electional s <laughs> election spending. Uh, CEC has always been able to maintain strong market position and secure political support, thanks to our dedicated lobbying bureau. CEC owns over 400 deep space vehicles, including five planet crackers, with the famous USG Ishimura as our flagship. CEC pioneered the scan and catch technique, which is now a staple of asteroid mining, and was the first to implement shock point drives for commercial use. With the largest supply of precious materials to commercial interests across inhabited space. We take your financial security and the well being of our employees uh, seriously when you invest in CEC. You are investing in a future we can all believe in. CEC, powering humanity to the future. Very interesting. Um, I like it, actually. It's an interesting concept. I don't think uh, mining planets is actually that smart. Because uh, we need the exec card for that. Uh, because as we have just discussed in that plan, uh, pamphlet, if you disrupt a solar system, bad things are going to happen to that solar system. If one planet gets knocked out of alignment, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Game over, man. Game freaking over. But, you know, I guess that's up to them. Now, mining asteroids makes a lot more sense. Oof. More text. Personal log. D. White, first officer. Goddamn unis are running the ship. So far, I know for sure. Uh, Captain Matthias, Kine, Mercer, Holt, uh, Corillo, Potts, Word, Maynard, uh, Shandy, X. Yeah, those people. That many senior office just officers just happen to be marker heads. That ah, marker heads can't be a coincidence. I know a stacked deck when I see one. Update checks and files. A lot of those reassignments started after Director Eckhart got chatty with the captain. Since when does the sea suit give a give a damn about personnel? Yeah, this was pretty obvious that um, it's now some kind of unitard deal. And obviously EarthGov was on to them. Ooh. So. This... is where we need to put our marker fragments as you can see and this will allow us to get the secret ending so it isn't just a case of collect the marker fragments and Robert's your father's brother you actually have to collect the fragments and then put them there <clears throat> to Captain B. Matthias from Unidentified Sender subject confidential Fleet position confirmed. To Captain Benjamin Matthias, referencing our pre-departure discussion, I am blessed to report that the Vested have authorised a premium stasis capsule for you aboard the Church's Holy Fleet. 
Congratulations! Your generous donation over the years has already covered all post-mortem stasis and cry preserve, uh, preservation fees. While I cannot guarantee which arc will safeguard your physical body, all fleet vessels are designed for centuries of deep space operation and equipped with state-of-the-art defense technology ensuring that convergence will proceed without interference when the holy hour approaches i must reiterate that this birth is conditional upon your successful completion of your pilgrimage once the marker is safely delivered into the church hands and all electronic records have been appropriately amended we will be pleased to finalize your resting place among the church's most blessed including altman himself Altman being the founder of the church. Yeah, so Captain Matthias was kind of leading this uh, whole charade. Kind of screwed up, really, when you think about it. It's his fault. Everybody died. In a way. This place crawls. Oh, hello. Hey, executive keycard. I will have that executive keycard. Hello. Oh, that actually kills them pretty well. Huh, how about that? Very nice. Did not expect that, actually. Oh, might actually, you know, want to take the thing that we found. Probably a good idea. Okay. Right. Let's have a little... Okay, here we go. Let's go. Uh, that is not... Oh, God. Alright. Let's do this thing. Oh, hey, guys. Just allow me to lock and load for a second. Come on, baby. Oh, that's the hit of the whole fruit right there. Oh, hi. Didn't notice you there. Oh, boy. Ready? Oof. Oof. We good? Yep, still a little bit left, huh? That's fine. Ooh. Allow me to be your biggest fan. <laughs> ah, lovely. Well, that was fun. I do love those quarantines. You see, it says a lot about a game where you actually, uh, you know, look forward to the enemies. Come on. Pay up. Fuck you, bitch. Pay me. Pay me! So, this weapon. Impressive piece of kit. Expensive to run, though, I'm sure. Alright. Uh, where? Ah. That's what we want. Ooh. Do you really think I was going to fall for that? Do you really think I only started hunting necros yesterday? I mean, honestly. Ooh. Hello. Oh, right. It's a gold. I was going to say, a weapon upgrade that I haven't got. That literally can't be possible. But, you know, what do I know? 
There you go. So, this should help greatly. So apparently there's an achievement for throwing X amount of objects. You don't have to throw uh, objects at enemies. You just have to throw uh, X about objects in total. Oh, hello. I see you. Really? Thank you. Yeah, some of those are just really hard or sometimes even impossible to pick up. Which is a shame. Anywho. It's another one of these tendrils done. How are we doing on that? Chief Steward Office. Okay. We can handle the Chief Steward's Office. And whilst we do that, let's have a little look at our items. Ro oh my god. Sell. Have we really got three of these? Jeez, Louise, Big Papa Cheese. Yeah, we're, we're kind of tearing through our energy. But we have so much of it. We're good. Um, let's grab all of that, actually. And let's store all of that. Because we don't really need that at the moment. And that gives us plenty of slots. Alright. That will work. Chief Steward's office, you say. Oh, hello. Oh, I was going to say, excuse me, where's my stuff? Anything? No? And of course, we pick up some more bloody plasma energy. Hello. Hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Terence Kine. Remember, we spoke on the ballot. If you're real, let me in. I need to destroy that cluster behind you. Not yet. Not, if, escape on that shuttle, and you'll kill us all. When they took the marker. From Aegis 7. It woke the being in the core of the planet. The hell is that? Mercer calls it the hive mind. Nexus organism which controls these necromorphs telepathically. If we leave while Even a single necromorph escapes. Humanity is finished. The marker. Amelia, she knew. She told me it would return the beast to its slumber. Okay. So if we return the marker to Aegis 7, it'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. But we need the shuttle to return it to the planet. You have a simulator. And I can let you. If it'll end this for good, deal. Excellent. I, I, I can distract Mercer, but not for long. Now get the marker to the shuttle bay quickly. Thank you, Mr. Clark. For helping me fix my mistakes. Well, you are welcome, dude. Um, now... Trouble is... I'm not sure if that's actually going to quell the beast, but we'll give it a go. You see, the thing is, the way um, 
Dead Space kind of hints at the reason there's no alien life in the universe, apart from the marker. Uh, it's basically because of the markers, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Right, so there's another fragment. The text log. Because basically these markers, um, eventually, these markers apparently are built or made or whatever by these massive hive mind things which take over entire planets and the entire planet becomes like this big organic mass and then that produces a marker apparently and then the marker is used to infect and spread the infection to other civilizations and it's kind of interesting because the necromorph infection is like the only other alien life uh, that's really been discussed in the Dead Space universe. And yeah, they kind of explain it like, well, humanity is uh, possibly all that's left because the necromorphs have killed everything else, which is interesting. I like to believe. I mean, if that was the case, oof, you're fucked. She was only on a voice. She was only a voice at first, but now she is my cons uh, constant opinion again. I had forgotten how much her presence soothes me, and I, and as always, she sees me. She sees to the heart of the problem. The marker must be returned. Perhaps there is some kind of accident, some severance. Do the marker and the hive mind always coordinate? Or can the hive mind slip the marker's influence somehow? Regardless, if this theory is correct, the two are now at odds. If the marker can quell the hive mind, it would cut the puppeteer's strings at a stroke. It seems obvious in retrospect. These necromorphs have no intelligence. How could they? Yet, there's clear, if rudimentary, purpose behind their actions, especially the gathering of corpses. They're clearly following some divine, uh, some drive to kill living organisms and gather biomass. But where does this drive come from? How does it command them? Do all necromorphs converted by a marker share this bond, pack instinct, or is the hive mind demonstrating a genuine telepathic communication, perhaps the first ever observed? How painful to admit that the marker's horrors still hold a fascination for me. How I think I understand my predecessors, those who first studied the black marker. Rather better. The road to hell begins with unprincipled curiosity. Foolish, foolish, foolish. I should have known sabotaging the engines was only a stopgap. Are we returning to Earth? Is the marker falling back into the church's hands? Yes, Amelia. There's always an alternate solution. Always. Right. So. I think what we should try and do... Before we get too far into this... Amelia. He's written Amelia, like, literally everywhere. Is perhaps... We need to um, go back and get the last marker. Maybe. Uh, let's upgrade the projectile speed, sure. And then one more node and then the line gun is done. So, force gun is done. Contact beam is done. Line gun needs one more node. Flamethrower is done. The ripper needs a lot of work. Pulse rifle. So it's only the Ripper and the pulse rifle that need upgrading. Cool. Never should have brought it on board. No, you bloody well shouldn't have. But you did, and now we've got to sort out your mess. So I'll be interested to find out whether returning the marker genuinely soothes it or what. See how that works. But I don't think so, because all it wants to do is harvest up biomass and create more beasties and grow and take over the universe. It's very similar to the Flood in a way. 
Like, shockingly similar. Actually. Okay. So. Where was... Where was, did we just come from? Let's go put that marker. Now, unfortunately... There are people that have reported... Um, the markers despawning. Which obviously is really not bloody good. So where... Ah, there's actually a room there that we didn't even go in. Executive bathrooms... Right, it's over the other side, isn't it? Yep. Okay, let's go back over the other side. God damn it. I'm almost out of time as well. <laughs> but that's okay. So we need to go this way, I believe, to put the marker back on its pedestal. Yep. And check out that one room that apparently we didn't even search. Which is kind of embarrassing. Look, you bastards. There's no need in trashing the place. If you want to go, we will go. Now, which one of these wasn't searched? That one in the corner. Curious. That was a very nice room as well. Lovely. Love what you've done with the place. Plenty of cash and a node. Thank you. That's the line gun finished. Plasma rounds. Is that it? I mean, I say, is that it? Like I'm ungrateful or something. You know. But nothing could be further from the truth. Now, which one of these? There we go. So, two left. And one is one that we've technically missed, which is going to be a huge ball ache if I can't go back to it. Uh, yeah, apparently... Well, I'm hoping by now that's a bug that would have been fixed, but we'll see. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's go find ourselves a save point and then we're going to call it that. For now, hey! Kill 30 enemies with a contact beam. So now, we can pretty much use any weapon we want. Because we don't have to sit here and farm for achievements. Anyway guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for watching. When we come back, well... We are going to keep persevering and pushing on. And hopefully we're going to make someone whole or something. So, till then guys, thanks for watching.